It is morning. Maybe it doesn't seem like it's morning yet, but it is morning. And uh, well, so I'm going to ask you if you turn the lights down some so we can get the effect as the sun rises. Uh, go ahead and leave this one on because I'll need it to read with. But if you leave the other ones off as the sun breaks through the, the windows during the service. Let's start with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you. We praise you because you're a mighty God. You are an awesome God. You are our Lord and our Savior. You created this world. You created it out of nothing. You spoke it into being. Your words, the power of your words, are beyond our imagination, beyond what we can even really, really realize that the God of creation can speak and the world is formed. The God of creation speaks and the trees and the mountains are formed. The God of creation speaks and man is formed. We are made out of the dust of the earth. Lord, you breathe the breath of life into us. Lord, we we think of the fact that Scripture refers to Jesus Christ as the Word of God. That same Word that created the world. Lord, it is beyond our understanding. As we celebrate this sunrise service, as we celebrate the defeat of death, the victory of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, we just thank you. Why you would do it for us, we don't know, other than what your scripture says, you love us, and that is good enough for us. We just thank you so much, and we praise you for your love. Your love which has filled us beyond all imagination. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Starting in the book of Luke, reading from the first verse, it says, But on the first day of the week, at early dawn they came to the tomb, bringing the spices that they had prepared. And they found a stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were perplexed about this, behold, two men suddenly stood near them in dazzling clothes. And as the women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, the men said to them, Why do you seek the living one among the dead? He is not here. But he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified in the third day, rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. Now they were Mary Magdalene and Joanna and Mary the mother of James, mother of James also the other women with them were telling these things to the apostles. But these words appeared to them as nonsense, and they would not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooped and looked in. He saw the linen wrappings only, and he went away to his home, marveling at what had happened. It's amazing how at a sunrise service you'll never have a real big crowd. And I commend each of you for showing up. Because the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, is one to be glorified at all times. 
to be praised at all times, to be honored at all times. It's not always easy to get out of bed early and come into a church service to worship. I remember years ago, I had taken some youth up to a revival type thing with Petra was playing. And that night, the youth worshiped and were all excited and praising the Lord. And uh, Petra played their music. They played the song, Exalt. And there wasn't a person I saw sitting in that whole stadium. As everybody was up and their hands were raised and they were, they were just worshiping the King of Kings. And then after the concert was going on, over, kids were kids and they sat up and did different things and most of them hardly even slept at all that night. About 8 o'clock in the morning, Petra was back on stage. And they started playing one of their songs. If you don't know Petra, it's rock. It's uh, Christian rock music. And uh, as they were playing the songs, John Schlitz stopped right in the middle of the song and he said, what's going on? He said, last night, he said, you just feel the Holy Spirit working and everybody was up and praising the Lord and here it is 8 o'clock in the morning and everybody's just driving and just kind of sitting there. And he said, it's hard to get up to rock music at 8 in the morning and uh, praise the Lord with it. And he sat down and he gave his personal testimony about what Jesus Christ had done in his life. And as loud as the kids were the night before, as you looked around there, they were totally enraptured by what John was talking to him about, his own personal life, and what Jesus Christ had done for him, bringing him out of the rock culture of the secular world and the drug life he had been involved in, to the point of desperation where he was willing to take his life. And all those kids were worshiping God in another way, by listening to a testimony that was just as powerful as the songs the night before. And so sometimes we think praising the Lord is in our singing, but praising the Lord is in our sharing our lives, what Jesus has done for us. Praising the Lord is in the way we live our lives, no matter where we're at, whether at home, whether at work, whether we're on the road someplace, whether we're on vacation, whether we're just at the store, maybe visiting family or friends. You can always praise the Lord in how you conduct yourself, how you glorify Him to others. I look at these women that sat up and after Jesus had been crucified, fixing these spices, Preparing for the time they could go. Take care of their Savior. And they get there and the tomb is empty. They're shook. Where is Jesus? I don't know about you. But if I was going to visit a grave and that tomb was empty. And two angels appeared to me. I think I'd be real shook. And as we think this morning, we need to realize we should be shook because Jesus Christ is alive. It should shake us out of our doldrums. It should shake us out of our mundane lives. It should wake us up to the fact that the King of Kings and the Lord of Lord is alive. He is the one who can make a difference in our lives. So I ask you if you can, can stand, stand up this morning as we sing. Amen. Amen. You may be 
seated. Look over in the book of John, chapter 20. Starting at verse 1. There's people who say, well, there's, if you read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there's little differences in what happened when they ran to that tomb. But actually, if you look at them and study them, they all line up with each other. They're just from different people's perspectives. And uh, the power of the gospel as if every life of these names they name the people that went there as they spent the rest of their lives serving Jesus Christ in the change it made in them and Jesus Christ makes a change in your life he is still alive today we made that very clear and Running into the living Christ will change your life for all eternity. It doesn't just change it for the time you die, but it changes it from that second forward on the time you live here on this earth. Sometimes we think, get to thinking this is all we have, is what we have here. But this is just the very beginning. That our lives will never end. Our human body will die and we'll go to be in paradise with the Lord and we'll receive another body God's word which Jesus Christ gave us explains all that very clearly but I want you to think how these people would have felt I know how I felt this year earlier on when we saw the riots all break loose and we saw our country rocked by riots. Where just at a, a moment's happening, people were gathering in the crowds of normal people that you would see on the street every day and might say hi to, or if you drove up to Omaha, you, you could drive down Dodge Street and not have a worry about anything. All of a sudden, these roads were blocked by individuals that were furious that were, the anger was just boiling over. And uh, I ended up having to be up in Omaha a little bit later. And you could still see some of that destruction and, and we actually avoided the Dodge Street area that day just because there was still stuff going on. And uh, think how these women would have felt they had been there. They had seen that angry crowd. They had seen that riot break out that had led to the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. And how easily people are swayed by what other people say. And that's how all the riots broke out this year. Something happens and boy, normal people all of a sudden turn violent. They'd seen that violence turned against Jesus Christ to the point where they drug him up and had him crucified, had him executed. And it talks about how the disciples were all gathered together in fear for their lives. Well, you know, let's that's a common thing. We know of different people that were in different cities. And there was fear. There was fear of what was going to happen. They were scared. But yet these women were more dedicated to Jesus Christ. Even after his execution. They did not know at that time, even though Jesus had shared with them that he was coming back. They didn't understand that. They had seen him die. They had seen the 
graphic death on a cross, which is a brutal death. It's, it's a horrifying thing to see, a life taken that way. I've been with people that have taken their last breath, and, it, and it's, it's, it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to watch, if, even if it's in a hospital bed or in the house, wherever it's at. And even if it's what we call a peaceful death, it's still a hard thing to watch. I can't imagine to watch something this brutal happen. Be there, watching it, if somebody you knew and loved, somebody you'd spent time with, and that you could believe was the Son of God. And how those women would have felt. But yet they still took the Sabbath time to worship, to honor God. And then as soon as they could, they slipped out in the early morning. Why in the early morning? Because that's when it would be light enough that they could slip out and come to the tomb. And as these women came to the tomb to bow down and worship, And to do one last thing that they could do for Jesus Christ. They could anoint him with the oils, put the perfumes on. They had a way of spreading stuff on the dead body back then. And they were going to do that for him. No matter the fear they had in their heart of what had happened before, a couple of nights earlier. It says, now on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene came early to the tomb. While it was still dark, and saw the tomb already taken away from, or the stone already taken away from the tomb. So she ran and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciples whom Jesus loved, and said to them. Now you might say, well, that one just mentions Mary Magdalene. Yes, that's because John just chose to mention one of the women. We know the other women were there. Because what had been said in the other Gospels. But Mary is the one who came and ran to the other disciples and told them. She was maybe the leader of the bunch, so she's the one that's brought out. And it says, They were taken away the Lord of the t out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciples went forth, and they were going to the tomb. The two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead faster than Peter and came to the tomb first, and stooping and looked in, he saw the linen wrappings laying there. But he did not go in, and so Simon Peter also came, following him, entered the tomb, and he saw the linen wrappings laying there, and the face cloth which had been on his head not laying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. So the other disciple who had first come to the tomb, then also entered, and he saw and believed. For as yet they had not understood the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. So the disciples went away again to their own homes. But Mary, standing outside the tomb weeping, and so as she wept, she stooped, and looked into the tomb, and she saw the two angels in white sitting, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had been laid. And they said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, Because they had taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they had laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, and did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Stop clinging to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came announcing to the disciples she had seen the Lord 
and that he had said these things to her. What a powerful, powerful testimony Mary carried for the rest of her life. But she wasn't the only one. Peter, later on, would be crucified upside down for his faith in Jesus Christ. The first one to go into the tomb and look at it are the 11 disciples. He went into the tomb, looked at the linen cloths, and he realized those words of Jesus came sinking in. That this was the only way of salvation. And John too. John would spend his whole life serving the Lord. Facing all sorts of trials and issues. Towards the end of his life when he's an old man. He would be exiled for his beliefs in Jesus Christ. They served the risen Savior. They served the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. They were not scared. They were willing to die for their God and their King. As you watch this video for just a couple of minutes, I want you to take your time and think about it. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Do you serve a risen Savior? Or are you just going through the motions? Maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ years ago, but you've just never really kept that fire going. You've kind of been trying to do it on your own and not let the Holy Spirit do it and keep you burning constantly, keep you moving forward, keeping that faith even when struggles face us, keeping that faith in Jesus Christ. And it's not easy. His word talks to us about it, about issues we face. But the more we focus on Jesus and what he did for us and for others, the more you can get closer and closer in your walk with the Lord. It's amazing. Many names call out on Jesus Christ. That video was made by a church that has false beliefs. There's only one thing That is the truth. And that is the Word of God. Many will come and try and deceive you away from God's Word. Many have added to it. Many have taken parts of it out because it doesn't line up with what they want. You can sing a song. You can see a video and you think, oh, well, those, those people must be serving Jesus Christ. As you watch that video, I'm sure that's what each and every one of us thought. Oh, it's a good, powerful video for Christ. Jesus Christ will use anything to glorify him. But you have to make sure that your heart and your beliefs are in line with God's Word. What is God's Word? We just read at the end of John. So I'm going to go back because he reminds throughout this time it says, well, they remember what he had to say. And remember when he talked at the very start of the service when I prayed about God creating the world through his word. He spoke the world into being. And it says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, 
and apart from him nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There came a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify about the light so that all might believe him. He was not the light, but he came to testify about the light. There was the true light which came into the world and lightens every man. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, and those who were his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become the children of God, even to those who believe in his name. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we saw His glory and glory as the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. John testified about Him and cried out, saying, This was He whom I said, He who comes after me has a higher rank than I, for He existed before me. For of His fullness we have all received, and grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses, grace and truth were realized through Jesus Christ. No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten God, who is in the bosom of the Father. He has explained Him. This is a testimony of John. What's John saying? The Word of God is Jesus Christ. The truth of God is Jesus Christ. The way to God is Jesus Christ. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but through me. Our faith, our lives, our eternity, we're all tied up in Jesus Christ. Many will deny him. Many more will be led astray. They'll be led to worship the Jesus of their own making, not the Jesus of history. Not the Jesus of the Bible. Here we are in 2021. That date is dated because of Jesus Christ. We date from the time of Christ. The whole world does. A year ago, we did not meet. We did not have a sunrise service here at the church. We did not have a worship service. But that can never stop us from praising God and worshiping Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Each and every day. We need to do it. As children of God. We are not God. We will never be God. But we do have to understand. That we have to bow our knees. And accept the free gift of eternal life. To spend all eternity with Him. There is not a thing in this world we can do on our own to get to paradise. It can't be done. Many of them put up a video talking about all the things we need to do. But because of what I know of the faith of those who put up that video, they do it to try to get their salvation, to earn their salvation. We don't do that. We go out and reach out to others because Jesus Christ told us to. We reach them with the gospel. We reach out to the poor with our love and with whatever God gives us to reach out to them with. We reach out to every single individual we know with the love of Jesus. And we reach out to those we don't know 
with the love of Jesus. Because there's only one thing that makes a difference. Where is your heart today? Is Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Is he your Savior? If not, today is the day of salvation. As we've seen the sun breaking through the stained glass windows and the beauty of that, the beauty of those windows pales horribly in comparison to the beauty of our Jesus Christ and what he can do in each and every one of our lives. He turned their world upside down. out so much better that they were willing to spend the rest of their lives serving the Lord they had seen crucified on a cross seen him breathe his last seen his body broken but yet they were willing to face their own deaths because they had seen the risen Savior Jesus Christ our Lord As we leave today, let's close in prayer. But remember, we don't worship a dead body. We don't worship a dead Savior. Muhammad is dead. Buddha is dead. Jesus Christ is alive and living. Hallelujah. God is alive. Jesus Christ is living today. And he lives for all eternity. Let us bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we just praise you. We praise you, Lord. Because you broke death apart. You defeated death. You defeated sin. You defeated Satan. Our lives, our whole eternity, is in your hands, Lord. You are the only one we have faith in. The only one who can do it. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through you. And we praise you for that. Help us to glorify you each and every day. Not just on Easter. Not just Easter morning. But each morning we arise. Help us to glorify you. To praise your name. For every breath we take. For every step we take. Help us to glorify the King of kings, the Lord of lords. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you one and all for coming.